I also want to say that I completely agree with the protesters who were around the Capitol Square and right here in front of this building earlier today. I agree with their message, I agree with their right to protest, and I agree with how determinedly and peacefully they protested today. This afternoon, large crowds assembled on the Capitol Square to peaceably exercise their First Amendment rights, decrying police violence leading to the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, and the pattern of unarmed black men dying at the hands of the police. This demonstration was peaceful as people, young and old, black and white, led by young people of color from our community, expressed their outrage. Madison police monitored the event and facilitated the demonstrators' rights. Several times throughout the afternoon, incidents were de-escalated successfully. The way that this organized event occurred was appropriate and right and consistent with Madison's tradition of engaged political dissent. I share the demonstrators' passion, frustration, and resolve that serious social change is needed in our nation. We must address systemic racism in all of its forms. Sadly, tonight, when the organized event dispersed, a relatively small number of individuals who I believe were more interested in trouble than protest, remained behind and began a course of property damage in the downtown area. Madison police have done their best to protect public safety, but a significant number of businesses were damaged by this group. This violence does nothing to support the interests of social justice nor police and criminal justice reform. This conduct harms our community as we attempt to express our outrage and advocate for needed change. I love Madison. I love all of the communities that we serve. We are better than this, but our society is not equitable nor as just as I want it to be. I am calling on everyone in Madison to come together in the pursuit of the kind of city of which we can all be proud. A city that lives up to our values of equity, inclusion, and shared prosperity. I want to thank the members of the Madison City Council that are standing here tonight with me, Alders Furman, Heck, Martin, Lemmer, Carter, Bidar, and Balde. I want to thank Renee Moe from the United Way and Representative Chris Taylor. And I'd like to turn the podium over to Council President Sherry Carter at this time. Thank you, Mayor. In the middle of a pandemic, we are here tonight. For the peaceful protests this afternoon, I want to thank the organizers and the participants. But what happened afterwards is a disgrace. George Floyd died an inhumane, terrible death. His family is grieving, along with the whole nation. It's another name on the long list of injustices. Okay, I'm sorry about that. 
um, injustices that we have seen over the years. But at this time, we need to be supporting the family. We need to be supporting each other. We are grieving. We all know about racism. And I can tell you that racism is never gonna end when it's just up to the people who have to deal with racism every day to end it. It takes all of us. If you want to make a change, if you want to do something, then go to the polls, cast your vote. Let's make a change together. But today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, and all next week, all of our energy needs to be guided towards the Floyd family. I was told today that George Floyd was a humble man, that he was the glue that kept his family together. He was the person that the family went to for advice. This man did not deserve to die the way he did but we deserve to treat this man in his aftermath with respect and with honor. He deserves this at this time. I ask that you go home tonight. Go home and think about it. And think about George Floyd and think about George Floyd's family, because that's where our hearts and minds need to be. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Next, I'm gonna ask Alder Shiva Bidar to join us. Thank you. We stand here tonight as um, the Brown um, Alders in support of our black um, community members, our black Alders, our black council president to say that racism in this country and its consequences such as the murder of George Floyd need to stop. We also know that people have different ways of expressing their anger Rightfully so, there is a lot of anger in our community, as there is anger across the country for what we continue to see, the murder of black men. So we know that the protest today was a peaceful protest. Many of us alders standing here today were present at that protest. Um, it was organized in a wonderful way by the organizers. They de-escalated throughout the protest Others have decided to express their angers in very different ways. And we all have different ways of doing that, but we ask for the community to come together to really fight for the long fight, which is the fight against racism in this country, the fight to really create the kind of police reform and policing that we all as a community are hoping for and want to strive for. So as President Carter said, please take time to reflect. And we would especially ask our white allies to take time to reflect on what they can do in the long run, not tonight, in the long run, to join us in a fight that has been a long-standing fight of black and brown people in this country. So go home, reflect, and do the work tomorrow, the next day, and the following day. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Next is Alder Samba Balde. Uh, well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, so my name is Samba Balde. Um, so over the past few days, I have had calls and emails uh, from leaders within the community, but also just white people 
who wants to know how they can help me. I have also had emails, phone calls from the black community. Their question is, what is going on? What can we tell our kids? This is 400 years after slavery. The only set of people that are treated the way we are treated, the only set of people that are treated the way uh, Floyd is treated is the black community. Why is it happening? I do not know the exact answers or the right answers. But what I know is, while racism is part of it, lack of will from our political leadership is also part of it. Lack of will from our community of leaders is part of it. The American people, long since, has agreed to change the status quo. But our political leaders has refused to do that. And so tonight, I call on all our political leaders, local, regional, state, and federal, that it is high time that this is over with. We need a seat at the table. Why is it that police officers, why is it that bad police officers, I would say, will kill black people and will never see a courtroom? Why is that? It's because people who are at the table are legislating to make sure that that is the case. So I call on good police officers to call on their bad colleagues to stop what they are doing. I call on any and everybody who believes that this is wrong to be part of the system that wants to correct it. It is not enough for us to say this is bad and feel sorry with black people and go and sit home. You either will be part of the racist community or be part of those who are against the racist community. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Alder. Our last speaker will be Representative Chris Taylor. Well, hello, everybody. I'm State Representative Chris Taylor. My district includes downtown Madison, the near east side and near west sides. Um, our community, like so many communities, like the Minneapolis community and communities throughout our nation, is hurting right now. People are upset, they're outraged, they're despondent over the brutal killing of George Floyd. So earlier today, Madisonians did what we always do when we want change, when we want transparency, when we want accountability. We took to the streets in a peaceful protest, and I was at the protest when it started at the Capitol, and I was at the protest as it moved to the jail. And I was proud of this community. Once again, this community demonstrated to the world that we will come together even in the face of a pandemic, even with masks on, as we social distance and raise our voices against the systemic racism that we see again and again and again, how many more people of color are going to be murdered? And so we came together, we raised our voices, and I was very surprised in the late afternoon to get a call that there was uh, some mayhem going on on State Street after our peaceful protest of thousands of people. I don't even know how many people came. It was a lot of people. I was on my bike. People came with their dogs and their kids. And we came together. And what I saw later on the television was not representative of this community. It was not representative of the people I gathered with. It was a representative of a very small group of people, I don't know where they're from, I don't know who they are, who wanted to soil and stain what we did earlier as a community in solidarity, in unison, in calling for change, in calling for radical needed change. So I am here tonight, first of all, to say to my community, we are gonna stand together and we are gonna continue to peacefully protest until we get that change that we need. Um, and we are gonna reject efforts 
violent efforts, efforts that wish to do harm, because our eyes are on our goal, and our goal is to make this community, this society, our country, a place where every person has an opportunity, where people have a chance to succeed, and where no person's life is cut short. So I'm, uh, I thank the mayor for bringing us together tonight, and I thank my community for coming out earlier today and showing who we are. And we will continue to stand together, and we will continue to protest peacefully together. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. We'll take a few questions now. The police chief is also here with us. Mayor, what's the plan going forward tonight? Uh, we're gonna continue to monitor the situation and I encourage everyone uh, in Madison to protest peacefully um, as long as you want and wherever you want, but to do it peacefully and to, inter to stop any property damage um, and to prevent violence from happening in our community. Do you wanna impose a curfew at all? like they did in Milwaukee? We are not planning on that at this moment. Were there any conversations this week about what a response would be like if what happens tonight were to have happened? Can you take us inside any of those conversations that may have happened this week? Uh, all I can say is that we have been monitoring the situation in other cities and trying to learn from it. Chief Wall. Based on what you saw in, pre in cities last night and the night before, how, how prepared were you for what happened tonight? Well, I feel like we were prepared. We were well staffed. We had contingencies in place. Uh, before the event, we've been in communication with the organizers and to try to get a feel for them for what their plans were and, and how we could help uh, accommodate their plans and their, their uh, uh, structure for their protest. Uh, certainly, you know, there's only so many things you can pre-staff for and some things are certainly unexpected, but I feel like the plan we had in place today was very consistent with how we've done things previously. Uh, I know that uh, during the event uh, our officers were taking a lot of projectiles, rocks, bottles, chairs were being thrown at officers. Uh, and I know of at least one injury that I don't believe was uh, uh, required medical treatment, uh, but I don't have any further information at this point. What's the worst you've seen? I've seen the, the planters turned over, I've seen some broken windows, but what's the worst you and your officers have seen so encountered so far? Well, I think that's it, the planters and, and uh, the windows and vehicle damage, and I think it's probably not any one of them individually, it's the aggregate that there's uh, really running up and down State Street, broken windows, tipped planters, uh, and that's a, a widespread uh, area where there's, that damage has taken place. Have you made any arrests? Uh, at, at this point, I don't believe we've made any arrests. Uh, we will certainly be doing follow-up to try to uh, identify the individuals that were responsible for the property damage, responsible for unsafe, violent behavior uh, during the event. But at this point, we haven't made any arrests. How will that happen? Will you review security video from the area? Take us to that process to hold people accountable for the damage. I think certainly video will be the uh, starting point for that. And uh, we'll go from there with other means if we have to. But uh, video, uh, will, I, I imagine, will be pretty helpful to us. And speaking of video, what was your initial reaction? And how do you feel today about the video showing what happened to George Floyd? Well, I think it's similar to, to what I said a few days ago and what I put out in my statement. I, I looked at it uh, with disbelief, dismay, anger, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, as we try to build trust with the community, we have to take a lot of baby steps, both here locally and nationally in policing, and then uh, an incident like that is just one leap backwards and makes us start over again and, and go over ground that we thought we had covered already. And uh, I can tell you that it's... Uh, I've heard from my officers, my rank and file officers, who share the same view I do without any prompting from me. And what we saw in that video is completely at odds with what our culture and values and philosophy are at MPD. This morning in Minneapolis, the governor and the mayors all said that they think there were a lot of outside agitators, maybe 80% of what was happening was from that. Did you see any signs of that here, Tom? 
Well, certainly we're hearing that from a number of cities across the country uh, that uh, the, the peaceful protesters have, have tended to be local and that the problems and the violence have been from, from outside folks. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't know if that's the case yet because we haven't been uh, able to, to put our hands on these folks just yet. So I think time will tell whether that's the case here in Madison as well. Can you describe your philosophy on arrest? Why wait until to review video later when these things are happening right before the eyes of many officers? They're smashing windows, they're spray painting buildings. Why not arrest them right then and there? Well, I think there, there's a couple things at play. First of all, you have to remember that uh, even a, a fully robust, uh, fully staffed police response to a protest or a crowd the officers are always going to be greatly outnumbered by the crowd and we have to make sure that we make smart decisions. We also, uh, even when we get to a, a high level where we're taking rocks and bottles and, and are at a, a, a clearly an unsafe situation, we want to avoid escalating it even further and if we can track these folks down later, uh, we'll do it. So it's a combination of, of, of reasons that, we've, that, that we didn't make any arrests, uh, but like I said, we'll certainly follow up on it and, and uh, make arrests if we're able to. Can you give us a sense of what the staffing would be like tonight if they do escalate further? Well, certainly we're going to maintain a robust uh, staffing uh, view. Well, we we still have the same officers that have been involved in this uh, this whole uh, incident are, are still on State Street now and still uh, out here. We're going to be bringing in additional folks as well as uh, you know, folks from, from some of our local partner agencies to assist us and make sure that we have a robust presence overnight. Uh, and my hope certainly is that we will not uh, see any sort of continued uh, behavior like this. Certainly we are always eager to police peaceful protests. That's in our DNA and we do a lot of that and that we're happy to do. But what we saw today with the violence and the damage uh, needs to stop, so I'm hopeful that, that we've seen the last of it, but in case we haven't, we'll be prepared. When you woke up this morning, did you think your officers would have to deploy things like tear gas and flashbangs uh, so early in the well, We didn't deploy any, any flashbangs. We did deploy chemical agents. Uh, well, you, you, well I, it's probably it's terminology then. It's a, it's a different a device, yes. Okay. It's, it's, that was a way to deliver the chemicals, unfortunately. Uh, the direct answer to you is, is, is no, but I, I think any time we police any kind of protest or any kind of large event, uh, we plan to have all contingencies covered and we hope things are going to go well, uh, but you never know how it's going to turn out. Uh, I think certainly having seen what we have seen across the country, I think probably we're a little more concerned with this particular uh, event than maybe some others we would be, but I was very hopeful that it wouldn't go this way and in fact, uh, as you heard, the, the main group of, of protesters and demonstrators had, had dispersed and, and we really thought the event was over uh, with a successful resolution and it was just this relatively small group that in, started engaging in this destructive behavior. If it's a small group, I'm wondering if you could tell us your thoughts on using a respiratory agent like tear gas and pepper spray during a well, and, and when I say small group, I, you know, I'm estimating about 150, so it's small in perspective and in comparison to the full group that was at the Capitol today and took place in the march. But it's still a relatively large group and compared to how many officers we have present. And the, the folks involved in the damage and the, the looting behavior were given orders to, to leave and disperse and were given plenty of opportunities. And while uh, certainly using chemical agents and pepper spray is never ideal or never what we're, we're hoping to have happen, uh, it's the best, least intrusive option at that point uh, for officers and, and for the public. All right, thank you very much. I just wanna end by saying that I think we need to come back to the real issue at hand here and I think that uh, Council President Carter said it best. Our attention should be on the murder of George Floyd and what his family is going through now um, and the work that we need to do to make structural change in this country 
against institutional racism. So thank you all for coming tonight, and thank you to everyone who is standing here with me. Have a good evening.